Good morning, guys. Welcome to our weekly lessons from home. Uh, so this this lesson today is for earth science. Okay, remember that it's for earth science, guys. This, this is so important that you remember which classes. I had some of you watch the other movie for the middle school kids and do assignments for them, and then they did some for you guys. So just remember on the video or the description at the bottom, I'll always put that this is for earth science or for the middle school for their science class, okay? So just pay attention to that. You're welcome to do any assignments you want to do on uh, my videos, but it's just if you don't do them for the right classes, you won't be getting credit, and that would suck. Okay, so last week we talked about the distances of the planets, how much we weigh on each planet. You had an assignment to figure out how much you weigh and then calculate what you would weigh on each planet. I appreciate those of you that did that. It's kind of cool to see what we would weigh on each of those. Uh, and so today what I would like to do is go into more detail about the individual planets themselves. So we will be talking about um, Mercury and Venus today. Now next week we'll be continuing on with these planets, but for this week it is just Mercury and Venus, so you have it pretty easy. Just make sure that you pay attention um, because there will be an assignment on your school master um, that uh, you're going to need to write a report, okay? Um, <clears throat> so just kind of pay attention to what we we're talking about. Now, the first thing that I wanted to talk about, we are going to be talking about Mercury. The very first and closest planet in our solar system. We already know some really interesting facts about Mercury, and that is that the dis, the, excuse me, the diameter of Mercury is about, now remember when we use these little squiggly signs right here, it is, it represents not an exact number necessarily because uh, things can change in science, right? It, we use the same thing in math. If it's close to a number or around that number, we can use these approximate symbols. So the diameter of the planet is about 3,065.4, oh, excuse me, 0.6 miles, okay, uh, in diameter. Now that is Mercury, okay? It's the second smallest planet in our solar system second to Pluto. So it's pretty small. It's a pretty small planet. Now the distance from the sun, the distance from the sun is about 0.39, so we'll put a 0.39 AUs, which is astronomical units. Remember that an astronomical unit is about 93 million miles, if I'm not mistaken. So this isn't even an astronomical unit, okay? So that would put this at about 36,270,000 miles from the sun. Now remember, with astronomical units and with this particular number, it is not the edge of the sun to the edge of Mercury. It is for the center of the sun to the center of Mercury, or an astronomical unit, okay? Or that's how we represent astronomical units. Now, we also know that the gravity of this particular planet is around, remember, I did those squiggle symbols, is around 0.38% of what it is here on Earth. So if you weighed 100 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 39 pounds on Mars, so it's, or, or sorry, on Mercury. So it's that 38 pounds, excuse me, on Mercury, it would be that percentage of, of weight, okay? And we figured that out last week with all of you guys figuring out your weights and how much you would weigh on each planet. Uh, now, I'm going to put another one here that says distance and size. The reason why I'm putting D and S is because when we talked in school a couple weeks ago, we talked about if the sun was the size of a basketball, and then we were to put that basketball in a field, how far apart would the planets be? in terms of feet and yards and what the size of them would be. Okay, so for Mercury, if the sun, if the sun was the size of a basketball, Mercury would be the size, whoops, excuse me, if I could spell size correctly, we could continue. The size of Mercury would be a pin head. Now a pinhead is a needle, okay? On a needle, like if you go buy clothes and they put needles in them to kind of put them in a package, the tiny little dot on top would be the size of Mercury if the size of the sun was a basketball. Now the distance, <clears throat> the distance would be about 36 feet 
from that basketball. So if you were to put that basketball on the ground, you would have to measure out 36 feet from that basketball, and that's where Mercury would be if it was the size of a pinhead, okay? So the distance, when you kind of look at that, is mind-boggling in a way, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase the stuff here, but we're still going to be talking about Mercury because there's still some things that we need to talk about. So we're just, and those are all things that we have already learned, just a very quick review. But I wanted to talk about how the Mercury is the second smallest planet. Now it's interesting that Mercury is the second smallest planet, considering that it's the closest one to the sun. That means that Mercury is extremely dense. We learned earlier in the year that the more dense the object, <clears throat> the closer it is to the sun. So we know that Mercury is the most dense of all of the planets, even though it's the second smallest, um, which is kind of interesting. Now, we haven't really been able to get satellites to Mercury very well. It's too close to the sun. There's a lot of radiation emitting from the sun that messes with satellites and makes it unable for people to, or not people, but for the satellites to land on Mercury, okay? But there have been a couple successes. Excuse me. I have the hiccups, apparently. There have been a, a, a few successful missions. Um, one of them was able to capture only about 45% of what the surface looks like. That means that the other 55% of Mercury, we have no idea what it really looks like. Because um, it's only 45% of it has been photographed. Now, what we have photographed is kind of interesting. We see a lot of craters. In fact, Mercury is a lot like our moon. Now, if you look at our moon or pictures of it, since it's closer, you can actually, at night on a full moon, walk outside and you can see the craters uh, if you've got some decent eyes, okay? Uh, now, Mercury would look something similar to this, and that's because Mercury does not have an atmosphere. It's so hot on Mercury that the atmosphere, if there were to be one, would burn up immediately. Also, the planet is so small that it doesn't really have the gravitational pull to keep gases and stuff on the planet, which is another reason why there's no, not uh, virtually no atmosphere on Mercury. But there's a lot of craters, and because there's no atmosphere, things get bombarded all the time by asteroids or meteorites or whatever that's hitting the planet, and that creates these, these craters. Um, they uh, something that's kind of cool is that they have mountains. Okay, I'm abbreviating that as MTS. But they are very, very uniform. Now what I mean by that they're uniform is they're not like the mountains here where you get peaks of mountains or like the Rocky Mountains that go all the way down to the through the United States and then they kind of stop and then you've got like the Andes Mountains in South America. These mountains on Mercury are very like uniform. They're very in a line or in a pattern and that's because when the planet was forming it, which brings me to another point, most of it is iron, okay? Most of this planet is iron, which is a very dense metal. And when it, the core of the planet, when it was being formed, uh, was really, really hot. And you know with metal, when it gets heated up, it expands, it swells and gets big. So the planet was actually bigger than what it is today. And what's happened is when that core cooled down, all that, me uh, um, sorry, all that melted iron shrunk because it got colder and when it shrunk it created these mountains because virtually the planet was collapsing in on itself so if I were to draw a diagram uh, hopefully you can see of mercury over here okay we have mercury and we've got these breaks these uniformed breaks in it like that it's because it shrunk down when the planet cooled or when the core of the planet cooled Something that's kind of interesting um, about Mercury is that if you were to be there at noonday, okay, sun is shining down on the planet, if you were able to stand on that planet and look at this, you'd look up at the sky and you would not see blue. There would be no blue sky. It would actually be black, 
pitch black sky, kind of like at nighttime, but everything around you would be light and very bright because you're so close to the sun. But when you look at the sky, it would be black, and that's because there's no atmosphere. So it would be a very bizarre situation to, to have that contrast with really bright stuff on the ground, but when you look in the sky, it's black. It would almost be like you're walking on our moon. Now, obviously, I haven't been to the moon, and nor have you guys, but if you were there, it would be very bright and white, and reflective, and then against the background, it would be all black, okay? Same thing with Mercury. At least that's what scientists think. You'd be able to see a lot of stars and stuff. Okay, so I wanted to talk up here in the corner, since I'm running out of room down here, I'm going to talk about the temperature. Now, we all know that as planets rotate and, and move like this, there's always going to be a dark side of the, the planet and a light side of the planet. And this will um, affect the temperatures greatly, okay? So on, on Mercury, the, the temperatures during the daytime can be anywhere from 425 degrees Fahrenheit to 797 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's during the day. It's pretty, pretty hot, okay? And at night, it can be anywhere from negative 170 degrees to, I'll do two so it doesn't look weird, to um, negative 274 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Quite the contrast. It'd be freezing cold on that dark side and extremely hot on the other side. And as it turns, those extremes just change. So obviously, Mercury is not an inhabitable planet. It's not at all, not a good planet to be on. Uh, however, it is important to study. All right, so that's Mercury. That's all I'm going to tell you about Mercury now. Your assignment at the end of this section is going to be looking for more fun facts or interesting things about Mercury and writing a paper on them. You are welcome to use some of this information in your paper, but I do need to see new stuff that I'm going to let you guys discover, okay? And then you're going to give me where these places um, are, like where, where you found that information, okay? So let me just erase the board really quick because the next one we're going to talk about is Venus. Uh, Venus is kind of a cool planet. Whoa, I'm going to drop my marker. All right, Venus. Venus is the second planet from, um, from the sun in our solar system. Um, and it's known as Earth's... E-A-R, sorry, Earth's twin. Okay, and that's because, as we know in class... Venus is the, pretty much the same size as Earth. It's got the same, pretty pretty similar diameter, uh, sim similar size. It's got an atmosphere, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about a couple things that we have already learned. Mind you, the distance, excuse me, the diameter. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The diameter of um, Venus is approximately 7,521.7 miles. And this is where I say it's Earth's twin because Earth is pretty similar to that, okay? Also, the distance, okay, from the sun is around 0.723 astronomical units, 0.73, so not quite one, a little bit less than that, or it's about 67 million 239,000 miles. Okay? The gravity... <clears throat> the gravity is pretty close to 0.91, which is very close to what we would... What, what, we weigh, what we would weigh here is what we would weigh on Venus. So it's pretty, pretty close. Um, and also, this last one, the distance... Um, and size, distance and size. So remember, if the sun were the size of a basketball, okay, if the sun were the size of the basketball, Venus would be about the size of a, a quilting, excuse me, quilting pen, pin. Okay, a quilting pin. I'm really struggling today writing on the board because it moves. It's not not like the one at school. 
Okay, a quilting pin is like those pins that your mom or your grandma uses to, to pin things together and they have that little ball. Sometimes it's like red or blue or black on top. That would be the size of what Venus is if the size of the sun was the size of a basketball. Now the distance would be about 67 feet from that basketball, okay? All right, so let's go back here to some of our other facts about Venus real quick. We'll try and get this is done as fast as possible. All right, it's the second planet from the sun, from sun, okay? It's the second planet from the sun. Now, <clears throat> there haven't been, so there's not many satellites Um, there haven't been very many satellites that have gone and made it successfully to Venus. Now, the reason why that is, is because Venus has a very thick atmosphere. It's extremely dense, um, and it's really hot on Venus. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. So when these satellites get there and they go through the atmosphere, either they burn up because of all the density, or once they get to the ground, they're immediately burnt up because of heat, okay? Maybe not immediately, but pretty quick. And in, in 1970, there was a Soviet Union satellite that landed on Venus. But it's cool that it did that. It landed there, but it only worked for an hour. And then it died, okay? Then, then it just burnt up and was dead. Um, and the reason why I wanted to mention that is because it's the hottest planet in the solar system. Um, it's hard to calculate what Venus's, uh, surface looks like because it's so hot. Now let me explain why. And that's because, uh, it's because of the green house effect. Okay. Uh, so the greenhouse effect is related to the CO2 or the carbon dioxide that makes up most of Venus's atmosphere. Okay, so it makes up most of Venus's atmosphere. And the reason why that is important is because it's really dense. And let me, let's see, where can I draw my planet here? Bear with me, I'm gonna erase this stuff. So hopefully you have it in your notes so that I can talk about this greenhouse effect, okay? <clears throat> So we, when they have a planet like this, 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 this is Venus, okay? The actual land of Venus. Now, the atmosphere on it is really dense, but I'm going to draw it pretty thick here just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we'll just do like a dotted line around this planet. Now, again, this does not represent the actual size of the, the atmosphere. I'm just drawing it so that you can see it, okay? What happens is the sun, and we have a happy sun up here super happy, okay? It's shining light to the planet and radiation and all that kind of stuff. So what happens is the light and the energy and the heat gets bounced into the atmosphere. It reflects off of the planet, but the problem is, is it cannot get off of the, out of the atmosphere because it's so dense. So what happens is it just sits in here and bounces around and just keeps heating up the planet. I mean, every once in a while you get a little bit that comes out, but not, not enough to cool the planet. It gets really, really hot. Now, where does all this CO2 come from? The CO2 comes from all the volcanoes on Venus. Venus is littered with volcanoes, which is another fact, okay? There's tons of volcanoes. In fact, some of these volcanoes, when they explode and they have a flow of, of magma or liquid rock or whatever you want to call it, these things um, can go for hundreds of miles. Now, it makes sense that it does that, though, because when we have a volcano that explodes here on Earth, the magma will flow to a point until it cools and then it hardens into a rock, and that's when it stops. But on Venus, it's so hot that when that lava is flowing, it never cools. It hard I mean, it will eventually cool, but 
it's still really, really hot. And so it just kind of keeps flowing to wherever it can. So these lava flows can be hundreds of miles long um, because it never cools. And there's a lot of them. Um, carbon dioxide, volcanoes. We talked about all, the, all that stuff. So let's talk about the temperature. Now we talked about how the greenhouse effect makes the temperature of the planets go up. And I want to explain the temperature range. Now, remember when we talked about Mercury, the temperature range at night was in the negatives, negative hundreds, because it was on the dark side of the planet. But this is different because there's an atmosphere keeping that heat and energy in, depending on if it's against the sun or not against the sun, the temperature still ranges a little bit, but it's still extremely hot because of that greenhouse effect. So the average temperatures on <clears throat> Venus, I'm not going to do a daytime temperature and a nighttime temperature because they're relatively the same. So during day and night, the average temperatures can be about 842 degrees Fahrenheit to about 887 degrees Fahrenheit. That's extremely hot. You would obviously not be able to survive there. But something that's interesting um, is that up inside the atmosphere, there are clouds. Okay, there's clouds of ga uh, gases produced types of clouds. Um, these might not be the same kind of clouds we have here that are made out of water and oxygen and methane and all that kind of stuff. These might be something different. But up inside the clouds of in the atmosphere, the temperature can be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is optimal. That's what, what the average temperature here is on Earth, give or take. Okay. But again, you wouldn't be able to live in the atmosphere because it's CO2. Um, but the temperature up there is much different than the surface temperature. The surface temperature is extremely hot. Um, if you guys have any questions on these, on Venus or on Mercury, you are welcome to email me. But I would please, 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 I highly recommend that you go to your school master program and you look up the assignments and the information on what to do for this paper. Uh, what I'm going to have you do is you're writing a one-page paper. Uh, you're going to type it on a computer, 12 font, double-spaced, my normal routine for that. And I want you to find some interesting facts about these planets. And I want you to tell me where you got your source information from besides these videos. Okay, you can use the books that you have at school. You can use anything online. You can watch a documentary. Just make sure that you tell me and uh, tell me where you got your information from, and that will all be posted on your Schoolmasters pro, uh, website, okay? If you have any questions, please email me, and good luck.